So this video is to help you understand one of the first scientists we'll talk about this year. His name is Francisco Reddy. He was alive in 1668 and uh, was an Italian physician. So his experiment is probably going to seem very juvenile and obvious to many of you, but you have to keep in mind the date in which this was happening. You know, the mid-1600s, scientific understanding is basically just beginning to develop at that point. So his experiment is a nice one for us to talk about because it's very, very simple. It's one that you can already pretty much predict the outcome of. You'll probably be amazed as we go through this that it was even something that was considered science at his time. But his observations are that if flies land on meat, that's uncovered, and then uh, maggots will later appear. So he's connecting those two things together. He's saying, you know, I think that the flies are the things that are causing the maggots. So his hypothesis then is if flies land on the meat, then flies produce maggots. The thing that he was going against is this idea called spontaneous generation. Many people at Reddy's time thought that things that thought that uh, living things could come from non-living things. You know, for example, one of the things in your book on chapter 8 is a recipe for bees. It says in this recipe there's four steps. You should kill a bull during the first thaw of winter. Then step two is to build a shed. Uh, step three is to place the dead bull on branches and herbs inside the shed. And then step four is to wait for summer. The, de the decaying body of the bull will produce bees. So the idea of like the dead body of the bull could produce these totally different living organisms that was completely accepted uh, during Reddy's time. And, and so the interesting thing about this is his ideas were revolutionary, even though for us it seems very obvious. The thing to keep in mind that um, Reddy didn't have available his time was the concept that there were microscopic things that the eye couldn't detect. You know, the eggs that the flies are laying are so small that you can't see them. So it seems as though you have flies that are then coming from this meat that is not alive. Well, I guess I should really say maggots that are coming from the meat that will eventually turn into flies. And so it's hard for Reddy to explain this to people, so he sets up an experiment to prove his ideas. So the setup for Reddy's experiment involved three different setups for uh, different flasks. He basically set up three different jars. The things he kept the same was the type of flask. You can see it's the same kind of glass that's used in each of these experiments. It's the same kind of meat used in every jar. So in a scientific experiment, you only want to have one set of variables, like one thing that you're changing. So he did a good job with this one. Uh, as far as the first flask went, it was one that was entirely opened. So this is open to the air. It shows that it is an area where the flies can come and land on the meat. This one would be referred to as his control. The one that he changed is the one he put the gauze over. This is the manipulated variable. The important thing about the gauze is that it allowed air to get into the container. The reason for the middle picture shows that uh, this was another option of Reddy's. He actually ran an earlier experiment where he corked off the top of the container. The problem with this setup is that it doesn't allow air into the jar. And uh, people at Reddy's time believed that air is where life came from. So they would have said, well, of course this one didn't work. This didn't work. It had nothing to do with the, uh, the flies, it had everything to do with the fact that the cork blocks the air from coming into the jar. So he ended up putting this gauze over the top. It was enough to keep the flies from getting to the meat, but then the air could get in, so that way people who would argue against him wouldn't really uh, have an argument to put forth for that one. So as you can probably imagine, his conclusion was that the unsealed flask grew maggots, the one with the gauze on top and then the one with the cork on top did not grow maggots. So this supports his idea that the maggots are coming from the flies, they're not coming from the meat itself. So lastly, getting to Reddy's conclusion, he said maggots only appear when flies come in contact with meat. Spontaneous generation does not occur. So he went through and uh, he showed with his results, that spontaneous generation was not supported, even though it was something that a lot of people that at his time believed in. Now, there are four main scientists we'll talk about this chapter. We have Reddy, who we just discussed in this video, Spallanzani, Needham, and Pasteur, and they all build on each other's experiments. 
So to watch the next video, you'll see that Reddy's experiment was just sort of the, the groundbreaking idea that maybe the spontaneous generation stuff doesn't happen. The next person we'll discuss actually builds on his concepts and improves on it. This is another reason why publishing findings is so important when it comes to science. Those published findings are what allow other people to see your ideas and maybe build on those ideas and even improve them. So we'll see that as we work our way through the scientists this chapter. There are many people building on and improving on others' ideas. There are also some guys that disprove other people that we'll talk about this chapter. There'll be some people that end up making mistakes that get disproven. It's all a valuable part of the scientific process. Thank you for watching.